The body to me is an amazing feature. I mean, it's just how people are able to sculpt it. Like chiseling a piece of wood, you can chisel it into anything you want, really, if you know what you're doing. But for Edward Island to me is the one. When I started bodybuilding, a lot of people would come up to me and say, why are you doing this, Johnny? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, why aren't, why aren't you going to university? Why aren't you taking this course? Why aren't you going out west? Why aren't you doing this? Welcome to walk its red soil But farmers are happy to work and to toil There's thousands of atoms in this land of ours It just, it was a no-brainer. Like, that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. A touch of God's great hand, this island must be. For instead, would island is heaven to me. Well, stop pulling. Stop. Here. 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 I'm mutant sponsored bodybuilder Johnny Dow, and this is where I call home Prince Edward Island, Canada. Living here in Prince Edward Island is different than living most places. When I was growing up, this is my fr the first place I lived, is the yellow apartment buildings. Our population is around 100,000, give or take a little bit. I used to get up on that crane there and swing off that crane and all the fishermen, including my dad, would get pissed right off. It's not a very big island. I mean, it would take four to five hours to drive from one tip to the next. It's kind of a horseshoe. As I was growing up, I started, I was always an athlete, always liked to be the best at whatever I did and excel at sports. So this is the start of his uh, career at age, what? Nine, probably. When Jonathan goes to do something for himself, he goes out for number one. No matter it was hockey or soccer, or he always, always did his very best. Grade nine, whenever I entered high school, is actually the first of me starting to work out. Clayton was a counselor at his school and he took Johnny under his wing. A very good friend of mine to this day, um, he was an educational assistant at the high school. I think in the second week of school, the principal called me in and said to someone here we think you might be interested in working with. So when I opened the file up, I, I remember seeing Johnny's name. Clayton worked out, so he got Johnny into, into the gym and taking him to powerlifting competitions and his weight at first wasn't very much, but his, his weight came up pretty quick, how much he was able to deadlift and squat and do and bench. And uh, I went on to set a national record, national squat record, and I went to set um, every powerlifting record in the high schools on Prince Edward Island here. I didn't like the way powerlifters looked, I like the way they lifted, but I wanted to look like a bodybuilder, but lift like a powerlifter. I quickly found out that it's one or the other, for me anyways. Come on! A lot of people would come up to me and say, why are you doing this, Johnny? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, why aren't, why aren't you going to university? Why aren't you taking this course? Why aren't you going out west? Why aren't you doing this? Up, two, let's go, come on. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to find out what I wanted to do, and and bodybuilding, it just, it was a no-brainer. Like, that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to be a professional bodybuilder and do that as my job. Good power. This show here, Canadian Nationals 2014, in two and a half weeks in Laval, Montreal, I hope to really unveil something that people are not gonna see coming, you know? I have, I have big hopes and, and I really hope this is my big ticket, my big break, but at the, at the end of the day, I have pre prepared myself for the worst, and if, if it all doesn't work out this show, we're just going back to the drawing board. Don't stop, it never stops. I'm gonna be repping the fuck out of these. Like, I'll try to get like 20 reps. Okay. Either way though, I'll tell you when I want you to come in. Give me a little bump, a little bit more, a little bit more. 
Three, two, one, go. The body to me is an amazing feature. I mean, it's just how people are able to sculpt it. And, uh, you know, it's almost like, chi uh, like chiseling a piece of, you know, wood. You can chisel it into anything you want, really, if you know what you're doing. And if you're working with the right tools. One more, one more with you, okay? Here we go. Come on. Up! <clears throat> Chest is one of my favorite body parts. Um, nice. I'm able to get connect very well with my chest and front delts. So that, uh, that leads to me getting a very big swell. Whereas in my back, I, I have to work on my mind to muscle connection. So again, chest is one of my favorite body parts. Big pumps. Blow them up, blow them up. Doing that pause in the middle of my set or wherever I may need it, the reason why I do that is because the actual stretch within the set, it creates this burn like, like no other. Like the only way you can get that much of a, of a tear down is to actually stretch the muscle. It's the same thing after you're done your set. If you can stretch out an area, like say you're doing biceps, if you can hold that bicep down like that, it's just giving you that much more of a tear down. I can get away with using very little weight and still get really, really good um, sets. When I come down, I try to come down, 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 and then I bring my, my elbows back from the air to there. And what that does is give me a better stretch at the bottom of the app. Every time, you need, every time you go to push the wrap up, you need to be pushing it and actually targeting your chest instead of doing your triceps. Everything is mind and muscle connection. There's little tiny guys that are using way more weight than I use right now, and you know, I'm still making progress. I'm not saying this because I can't lift heavy, because me and you both know when I want to lift, I can fucking lift. Being vulnerable to injuries right now because my joints are, are weak I'm this close to the show. This is as heavy as I'll go. It's two plates with this here. It's, it's literally a play weight. You just have to take your reps slow and uh, really know how to work with it. My structure is not as big as, as some of the guys I compete against. So in clothing, these guys may look a lot larger than me, but Whenever I get on stage, start posing, everything seems to come together and eyes start to attract to me. Getting this close to the show, it's more running on motivation and, uh, and drive than it is actual energy. My energy is low, but when it's time for me to get going and get ready to go to the gym, you know, I perk up and spark up and, and always come ready to get the job done.
when I hit three weeks out, I wasn't too, too bad. Like I wasn't like starving. Made a couple very minor changes with my, with my new trainer, um, Salim. I, we added a little bit more fats and stuff like that. Every two hours, I'm just starving. Um, but like, it's like my metabolism jumped like five notches yet again. Someday I want to have that physique where when I step on stage, people don't go, don't look and, and go, wow, beautiful. Now I want them to be like, just disgusted. I want them to be disgusted with what they see. Sickening condition. Lines that have never been seen before. Someday, someday. Someday soon too. Work for it. That concludes our chest workout here. Um, me and John are gonna go get something deep right away. I'm thinking chicken and veggies. How's that sound to you? You know what? I'd eat anything. Two and a half weeks out, I'm just starving. Like every two and a half, two hours, I'm just ready to drive some food. No more carbs tonight though, so more veggies, I guess. Let's go. When I'm out west working, I work inside of a big building, a chain of three buildings. We assemble big air seeders for farming. Stuff that you've probably never seen before. I mean, these are massive pieces of equipment. Tires bigger than me. $200,000 Canadian is what it costs to, to buy one of these units. It's a great job, I like it. I like the people that I'm surrounded with. I'm, it's just not in a good location. Just driving to work there now. My shift runs from 3.15 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. There's, there's no good gym out there, so I have to make do with a little tiny gym that the equipment's not very good in, and the hours sometimes don't allow me to train as long as I want to, or even at all. When I'm away working, and I get the chance to come home at the end of it, um, it's kind of like a relief, like, ah. Uh. We are at my house in Middleton, Prince Edward Island. We're gonna show you guys through my place. This is where I live. It's not a mansion, but we like it here. Now, whenever we bought this house a month and a half ago or five weeks ago, the appliances were already in here, and they give us this stove that has three small burners and one big burner. So I have these little burners cranked way the fuck up, trying to heat up a big pan to cook my meat in. It's kind of a nuisance. Another thing that I love about this house is that it has a dishwasher. I grew up with a dishwasher and whenever I was at West last year, I was housed in a house that had a dishwasher. And I didn't know how to use it or nothing like that, I haven't used one before. Learned how to use it because my roommate showed me how and ever since it's been like, a must, have to have it. In the fridge, what do we got going on in here? Got all my mustards here, honey mustard. This is a good mustard too that I really like. I like to use during prep. It is sweet chili heat. And of course, got my Walden Farms, you know, strawberry syrups, blueberry syrup, and caramel syrup. You never go too far without your hot sauce. This is the master bedroom. <clears throat> this is where all the magic happens. This side is my side of the bed, and only my side of the bed. My girlfriend, Brittany, she sleeps on this side. Over here, if you want to come over here, these are the dog's beds that the dogs are supposed to sleep in every night. All right, if you want to come in here, this is our master bath. You know, I try to get in this bath as much as possible, put some Epsom salts in there, relax. A nice touch to this too is 
you can turn the lights off and turn these fake candles on and it kind of feels really romantic and I like that. That's our toilet right there. That's where all the rest of the magic happens. That's mine. That's all mine. Okay, I've showed you guys enough in this room. Let's get out of here. What do you think about these? See, whenever we get in here, we, had, we bought a new washer and dryer and we bought a new sectional. And Brittany, my girlfriend, decided that she had to have this certain color of fabric. Not fabric, just a certain color of fabric. So it was gonna take us eight weeks to get this certain color of fabric in. So you guys would've came here and there wouldn't have been absolutely anything to sit down on in here. So what I did is I went and I rented these, okay? Next time you guys come here, you'll see a nice little sectional. All right, now here is my favorite room of the house. I love it. And this is my posing room. Now, for a follower that looks in the mirror a lot, does a lot of poses and, and uh, studies the body and how the body looks and how it appears, this is a perfect little room. You know, it has real big mirrors front and back. Um, adjustable lighting, right? So I can point those lights anywhere I want. Uh, this one here, that uh, is 19 PEI um, Strongman. This one here, 2013 um, overall bodybuilding champion, New Brunswick Provincials. This is uh, another year I won the um, Junior Strongman competition, 19 and under. This is the 2012 Canadian uh, Nationals Junior Men's title. Um, this was won in Edmonton, Alberta. And this, was, this is a highlight of my life. To win Nationals as a super heavyweight, or you know, like a, as an open, um, would be, I, I couldn't even imagine it. So that's what I'm seeking, and I really hope that someday soon, really soon if possible <laughs> um, that can happen and I can um, I can kind of feel that feeling all over again probably times 10 this is after junior nationals my community got this made for me yeah congratulations from the town of Borden Carleton that was very nice they they put me in after I won that they put me in like the town parade and everything like you know and they had like a reception at the local arena you know, I always keep that around for, for memory's sake and, and, and to never forget that people do support me and, and appreciate what I do. You okay? You okay? You just don't ground or you fairing? Lowest. Hey, hey, that's a clothespin. Not too long clothespins. Here, go play. Come on, let's go play. Get him, get him. I do like having a spot, a nice little spot like this here at PEI, where it's quiet, you know, you're, you're not being bugged by a bunch of neighbors. Got these bones from there four or five days ago. They're cooked in honey garlic. Ooh, a big chunk out of this one, bruh. I'm not gonna be here all year round. Um, it's never gonna be like that. But I am gonna be here for probably at least half of the year. The dogs get going all the time. I bring them out here first thing in the morning, me or Brittany does, and uh, they just go nuts out here. Again, it's not fast paced um, and busy, like city-like, what a, a lot of people are used to. Bring it back. Teamwork, good work. It's quiet, it's country, and we seem to like it here. And the dogs do too. He's a good puppy dog. He's a good puppy dog. Give me buttery kids. Give me buttery kids.
when I was growing up, this is my f the first place I lived, is the yellow apartment buildings. That's where I lived till I was seven or eight years old, I guess. This is our little post office. That's where all the mail comes in and comes out of. I like getting the mail, so I, uh, I always make sure I'm there first. This is the local wharf. This is actually where my dad fish, fished out of the whole time I was growing up. Whenever they were fishing lobsters, they'd have lobster traps here stacked on one side of the wharf. And we used to get on the traps and be jumping off the traps. And, and uh, the fishermen did not like that either, to say the least. So this is where I get my haircut, in Barbershop Peter. He is the best barber uh, anyone will ever find. Anytime I have to go to a different barber, I'm just not in good humor. Okay, so this yellow and brown house is where my sister lives now. You know, look at the, look at the air, look at the mess. She gets that from her mother. <laughs> That's where my buddy Patrick lives. I've had a lot of ups and downs through my life, uh, more than the average person, that's, that's for sure. So we're here at uh, Patrick's Grave. Um, we're in Cape Traverse, Prince Edward Island. We've got his picture there, the hockey sticks, it's really nice. Um, when Pat passed, he was 16. Uh, he passed in, on July 15, 2005. Well, when Johnny was in, back in high school, he had a really good friend uh, who committed suicide. Patrick and Johnny were the best of friends, right? Um, so everybody was sort of devastated by it. And, it's, you know, it's, when your best friend takes his own life, um, it's something that you, you never forget that. It was tough on everyone in the town, and it took a hard hit to Johnny. And um, alcohol kind of was his savior th that he thought. When I drank, I, I blacked out every single time. I had my first drink of alcohol when I was 13 years old. Well, his behavior probably uh, deteriorated because I don't think he would have went out and just, he wouldn't have taken his life in the way that Patrick did. You know, if somebody said, you, are you, are you suicidal or you're thinking about killing yourself, he probably would have answered no, but his behavior and his, and his lifestyle certainly um, was indicative of someone who, was, who really didn't care. So this is the area, area right now where we're at, where I ended up getting alcohol poisoning and almost losing my life. Um, and that gazebo right there is where the little Battle of the Bands or um, gig was playing. And we were all, there's a, I don't know, fair little crowd out here, and there was cars parked out here and everything. A lot of, lot of drinking going on. Um, and this is where I was unresponsive, and where they took me, ended up taking me to the hospital. Whenever I got that extra, extra pint or, or Mickey, whatever you want to call it, that's where it all went downhill. It was after he was having troubles, um, after Pat had died and yeah, Andrew the cop um, had called Mums and said that he was taking him right to the hospital because he went unresponsive in the back of the car. So uh, me and Mom rushed right into the hospital and Johnny was on the table and he, um, his heart had stopped and the doctor was coming out to tell my family that I had passed away. He walked outside the room, seeing my family, they're having a really tough time crying, you know, just holding each other, um, fearing the worst. And that's whenever the doctor said he turned around instantly and just tried to shock me more and try to get more of a beat off my heart. And that's whenever he did get a little jump in my heart and a little beat. So he just tried to work off it. It, I went flatline again, and he was able to, you know, give me some more jolts and to, and to bring me back um, for good. We're just all sitting in the waiting room, waiting for the doctor to come and tell us, you know, that he's okay and that he's going to be okay. And it just minutes seemed like hours. You know, that was 
like one of the worst nights of my life. To see like the pain that he was going through and he was trying to to save himself with alcohol and it, that wasn't the case at all. It was hurting himself but everyone. It was definitely a scary time. More scary for my family, I think, because I didn't really know what was going on, but um, it's not something that my family likes to talk about too much. It's kind of, they kind of put that in the back burner. It brings back a, a bad time for them and a hard time for them. So I'm opening up to you guys right now because I want everyone to know that, you know, no matter where you come from, what you do or what issues you have, you can turn it around and you can be successful. So this is the entrance to the Johnny Dow Fitness Center. They named this little tiny fitness center above the local arena after me because they see the dedication and hard work I put into the sport. Now this is not a huge facility or nothing like that, it's very, very, very minor. Um, but it does mean a lot to me that they took the initiative and actually put my name on, um, on, the, on the little gym here. So, you know, it says a lot for the community and, and says a lot for me and they just wanted to give back a bit. So let's go on in and take a look at it. There's the, uh, got my signature down there. Every day I was here at some point in time, um, from just when I was a little fella. Um, a lot of those days I would be on the ice. Blue hair, Adam AA, Island Champs, uh, Jonathan Devil. If I wasn't on the ice, I was watching hockey or, or watching someone play, and of course eating those great greasy french fries. Okay, so here's the little tiny facility that they named at. It's not big, they don't make money off this little gym. It's simply here for people that are starting out and that don't want to be intimidated going into a bigger gym. So I do know people that come here and train every single day and they seem to like it, you know. It's nice and close, convenient, it's very cheap, like next to nothing. And it's 24 hours, you can come up here whenever you want. So when I was training for Junior National, I would come up here, you know, sometimes two, three, four in the morning when I couldn't sleep and I'd be on the elliptical and I'd be on the treadmill just, just going. So they had the little the sign up here. Looks pretty good. They did a pretty good job of it. Pretty happy with it. What do you got, bud? Crab. No, oh, it's a crab. Today we come over here because this is where we like to take the dogs down here to run. Um, it's not a very busy beach and we can kind of just let them off their leash, take their collars off and let them go and run. You guys may have seen me doing barbell lunges on the beach. Um, this is actually the spot where I do it. Whenever I need to kind of just think and, and come down here and free my mind a bit, I just put my headphones in and I just walk. I walk that way as far as you can put near sea. Um, you know, just along the water edge, and that I find that's the best thing. Uh, it's really soothing and, and kind of just not a care in the world, just thinking freely, you know. I love that shit. My mom's house is literally just across, like, it's just across the bank there. My mother hasn't spoiled rotten. I'd have to say my number one fans are my closest family, you know, my mother. I just do his cooking and laundry. <laughs> yeah. My sister. I'm the I'm kind of the one where he leans on. Leans on. I'm the one that paints his body with with uh, tan and. My nephews. He loves to spend time with his nephews. Um, just last weekend, he took Kemper for the night, just out of the blue. Uh, my girlfriend. You must have cleaned the shit up, did you? Like Johnny has his own house now with his girlfriend and he still goes to mom and mom's and cooks meals like. Yeah, like the other night he was at the gym and he lives five minutes from the gym now and then he comes home so I said, oh, what's going on? He goes, oh, I have, I'm coming to have a shower. I said, 
oh, here? He goes, yeah. And then he gets at the frying pan, and what are you doing? Cook. Oh, you got a frying pan home? You got, yeah, yeah, we have some. Well, take four or five of these and just <laughs> be off. <laughs> the support is great, and you know, it's something you gotta be thankful for because not many people can all, not everyone can say that they have the, the amount of support that I have, that's for sure. Jonathan will never leave home. No. Arm session, arm thrashing. All right, so we're here at Bedak Total Fitness. Uh, this is my home away from home. This is where I've trained since I was 15 years old, um, day in and day out. Blood, sweat, and tears. I haven't been training here as much this prep due to my injury, due to the fact that I need more machines than free weight stuff, but there's been a lot of fucking weight moves here and there's gonna be more weight moves in the future. We're gonna smash some arms here tonight, you know, see, uh, show you guys how it's done and uh, get the biggest swell we can. Ah. No, my arm strength is definitely um, a strong point. I'm slowly converting everything over to lighter weight, more volume, better muscle, mind to muscle connection. <sighs> what I can get done with light weight now, I never ever in a million years before could. Whenever I'm doing these concentration curls, um, I come down on the negative portion like a hammer curl, and on the upward contraction portion, I turn it um, to hit more of the peak. It's all about working with the weight that you have on the bar and making that weight work for you. I mean, you can get, done, get it done with light weight, you just have to know how to use it. And that's what I've been doing lately. Not just with arms, but with everything. Two weeks out, you die so fast. You head just, you feel like 100% your first five reps and all of a sudden, bang. It hits you within like one or two reps and you just, you had nothing left. I use less weight now than a lot of teenagers use, average teenagers. Ugh. But I got something they don't have. That's all her. On the try. My triceps actually fill um, a lot more than half my arm now, so I get a crazy pump when I hit triceps now. And I live for the pump. Uh, three, come on. Uh. Uh. I said still sore from yesterday. One thing 
about, I hate about whenever um, I get, you know, my, my spray on and stuff, and stuff like that, like oiled up. My skin gets slippery and I get, I get it all over my hands. When I go to hit my front lat spread, rear lat spread, and my side tricep, I find it hard because it keeps slipping off. Just gotta build a bigger back, I guess. a few poses in the back room and then call her uh, yeehaw. As expected, my energy level is low, but I'm okay with that, you know. I'm still able um, to train with high reps, high volume, and actually have good workouts still. I don't get a chance to train here that often anymore, so to get back in here for an arm session, is good, you know, it brings back um, the old days now. I, I love that, so. Hey, good. Let's get at it. Wait, her face is probably like this. <laughs> so, this, this show here, Canadian Nationals 2014, in two and a half weeks in Laval, Montreal, I hope to really unveil something that people are not gonna see coming. I'm hoping that it works out the way we all want it to work out and that he's not disappointed because he's worked so hard. When it comes down to it, I know that each and every one that cares, that truly cares about me is proud of how far I came today. You know, if he doesn't win, he doesn't win. We'll let him cool down and, you know, give him hugs and kisses and tell him good job, but... He's done his best. Exactly, there's always the next time. I have big hopes and, and I really hope this is my big ticket, my big break, but at the, at the end of the day, I have pre prepared myself for the worst and if, if it all doesn't work out this show, we're just going back to the drawing board. Don't stop, it never stops. Okay, here we are at the uh, 2014 CBBF Nationals in Laval, Quebec with mutant athlete Johnny Dow in the hotel room the night before the show. Once again, we did the same thing last year. So we just have a few questions for Johnny to see how he's feeling right now. Um, first question, um, how do you feel now compared to this time, the same time the night before the show uh, last year? Last Nationals? Yeah. We're doing things totally different this time. We are keeping water in, a lot of water in till tonight, Friday night, the night before the show. Um, fats are way up, so I, I have more energy this prep. You know, I'm much, much bigger and fuller. So yeah, ultimately I do feel a lot better and, and I feel more confident too, you know, so. I look forward to getting on stage because I know there's nothing more I could have done to be better at that time. So I'm always happy with the way I look and happy with my efforts throughout prep. Go Johnny. Especially at a, at a top notch event, you see so many high caliber athletes and it can be a little bit discouraging sometimes whenever you, you get backstage and you see everyone else pumping up and these guys are also the best in the country. But you have to stick to your guns and uh, you know, just realize that you did everything you could do to be where you're at at that particular time. And I was excited because I knew I had a big fan support there. Whenever you hear these people cheering for you, it gives you almost a drive, an extra bump when you're on stage, and there's, there's not really much that can compete with that. Once you get that feeling on stage, that you feel like there's just no one or anything that can get in your way. And they call their top five out, and the top five individuals in each class do their um, routine by themselves. So they head the stage to themselves. After everyone, the top five of each class are done of their routines, they call out their top three in any, in 
any particular order. It doesn't, doesn't matter. So when they call it the top two, I just, there was no, there was no thought in my head that I wasn't going to be the next person that's, that was going to be called. And when they called a different name uh, for the third person to go out, I was like, I didn't, I, I was second guessing myself. I didn't know if they were calling top five back out, what was going on, because I thought for sure, like 100% sure that I was going to be in that top three. And I wasn't. I went back, I went backstage and I kind of like looked in the mirror for a second and I was still just dazed and confused. And by this time I realized that I never got top three. And uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a hard pill to swallow. Very disappointed. Extremely disappointed. So just getting back to the hotel room. Um, didn't go my way again. Um, finished fourth or fifth. Uh, I felt like I was better than that, of course. Um, just back to the drawing board. Get ready for what's next, you know? So it's been five weeks since my competition. Um, next month is back out to Western Canada, where I think I'll be going back to work at the same job I had before. But uh, it's, you know, we're just gonna work hard all year and, and find out what's, what's next for, for me um, and what show I'll be doing next. Next time I step on stage, there's not gonna be any doubt on where I should be placing because I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Make a bold statement that, you know, um, there's only. I only want to be in one spot, and I'm gonna work hard all year long to to prove that. And uh, I just. I'm gonna display something that I've never displayed before. So, you know, I have a lot of work ahead of me, and I know this, and I'm prepared. I'm preparing myself for a long, hard off season this year, and. Uh, yeah, it's going to be black and white next time I step on stage, I promise.